My name is Carrie. I now live with my daughter Deanna and her husband Garrett and their daughter Sarah. This year I turned 70, and it feels like a significant milestone. My husband Matt passed away three years ago due to illness, and originally I was living alone until my daughter and her husband invited me to stay with them. Mom, won't you come live with us? What? But wouldn't I be a burden? No, we want to live with Carrie. It's not exactly payback. But we really appreciate everything you've done for us, Carrie. Why don't we all live together happily? I was feeling lonely living alone, so I was grateful that they cared so much. Sarah, my first granddaughter, is such a good kid, and I'm living happily now. Feeling the need for a purpose in life, I'm fortunate to be healthy and currently working part-time at the checkout counter of a supermarket. It's a small supermarket, but well-loved by the locals and everyone is friendly. Even the young part-timers look up to me, and I have no complaints. However, there is one thing that bothers me. That is... Oh, working part-time again today, Carrie? Catherine, welcome. The woman who comes to the supermarket is Catherine, my son Polly's wife. That makes her Deanna's sister-in-law. She got married just before Deanna did and lives a bit far from here. Honestly, I've never gotten along well with Catherine. It seems she didn't think highly of me from the beginning and she often made snide remarks, even during greetings. Catherine, let's get along well from now on. Uh, Carrie, that's fine. You don't need to bother. What? You don't need to worry about us, so please don't interfere too much, okay? I'll handle family matters just fine. We don't want any mother-in-law and daughter-in-law conflict, do we? It's stressful for both of us. She put up a wall from the beginning and we were shocked. At the same time, I didn't have a good impression of her. Matt didn't think highly of Catherine either, but Polly seemed quite smitten with her. I'm definitely going to marry Catherine, he used to say. Polly was a troublemaker since he was young and we often struggled to handle him. He had behavioral issues at school and we were frequently called in. Matt initially wanted to discuss it at home, but eventually he gave up. Polly finally got a job and started working. And just when we thought we could relax, he brought Catherine to introduce her to us. Catherine was a strikingly beautiful woman with a flamboyant appearance. On the day of the greeting, I cooked a big meal but Catherine didn't seem to like it. I'm not really into greasy food. It seems like some old-fashioned country cooking, she said, hardly eating. Matt was about to yell at her, but we managed to finish the greeting peacefully. We tried to convince them a few times, but they ended up getting married and now live a bit far from here. It was when Matt was still alive that he warned, You better be sure about this. Don't come crying to me if something goes wrong but Polly was full of unfounded confidence, saying, It'll be absolutely fine. We only saw each other at Christmas gatherings, but ever since I started my part-time job, I happened to run into Catherine at my workplace. That encounter is unforgettable because of how shocking it was. Oh, isn't that Carrie? Catherine, why are you here? Why? Isn't that rude to say to a customer? Uh, sorry, I was just surprised. And here you are at 70, working as a part-timer. Are you struggling for money? Or have you run out of money to give to your sisters? Catherine, with her condescending attitude, continued to make snide remarks, taking advantage of the fact that it wasn't busy. Apparently, though they lived a distance away, she just happened to be shopping nearby, and we happened to meet. No, I started part-time work because I thought it would be fulfilling. Everyone at work is nice and I'm content. Catherine seemed surprised for a moment at my words, but then burst out laughing. Carrie, <laughs> don't push yourself. You don't have much time left anyway. I was just stunned by her words, suggesting a person's lifespan is so carelessly. As the line at the register started to grow, Catherine left. Carrie, are you okay? Yes, sorry about that. She's my son's wife. I didn't mean to cause trouble. No way. That attitude is unbelievable. No respect for a mother-in-law at all. The part-timer who overheard was visibly upset. I was touched that someone cared about me and thanked her for her concern. Let me know if she comes back. Yes, thank you. 
I thought it was just a coincidence. They live far away, so I didn't expect to see her for a while. But reality proved harsh. Catherine started coming to my workplace about three times a week, deliberately seeking me out to make unpleasant remarks. She even spoke disdainfully about Deanna and Garrett, and as if that wasn't bad enough, she even demanded discounts on the store's products. Oh, Carrie, this deli container's lid is open, isn't that unhygienic? I'll buy it, so give me a discount. That's... I can't do that. Sorry. Please buy something else, we'll dispose of that one. What? I'm offering to buy it for you. Every time Catherine came to work, the manager would apologize and she seemed to enjoy his discomfort with a malicious smile. I was on the verge of exploding with anger. It was becoming a nuisance to the workplace, and I didn't want to trouble Deanna and her family. More importantly, for my own dignity, I called Catherine the next day. Catherine, please stop coming to my workplace and causing trouble. If this continues, I will have to take action as a mother-in-law. Catherine laughed mockingly over the phone. <laughs> trouble! I'm just worried about Carrie. I wanted to scream at her claim of concern, but I held back and continued calmly. Your actions are a nuisance. I won't tolerate it any longer. What? You think it's wrong for me to worry about Carrie? I don't think I deserve to be treated like this. Unrepentant and even defiant, Catherine frustrated me. Anyway, please stop doing this in the future. Seemingly displeased with my inability to tolerate her any longer, Catherine spat out her last words. Don't act all high and mighty. You bottom-tier old lady who can't do anything but work before hitting the grave. I'll be sure to tell Polly about this. With that, she hung up. True to her word, the next day I received a call from Polly. What the hell did you say to Catherine, Mom? That's awful. As soon as I answered, Polly was yelling at me. It's Catherine who's awful. What are you talking about? You said terrible things to Catherine. She's crying. No matter if you're my mother, I won't forgive this. Apparently, Catherine had told Polly a fabricated story, making it seem like I had severely scolded her. Believing her, Polly was furious. If that was all, it would have been fine. But Polly kept calling in anger for hours and finally said, If this happens again, I won't forgive you. And hung up. Ah, <sighs> Mom, what's wrong? Ah, oh, Deanna, welcome back. Nothing, really. That's a lie. That voice was Polly's, right? Deanna looked at me sharply. It was hard to stick to the lie. Polly and Deanna, although siblings, if I keep this from them, it might someday cause trouble. I even worried it might harm Sarah. With that thought, I decided to tell Deanna and the others everything. Deanna related to Garrett, and eventually the three of us sat down to talk in the evening. I can't believe that idiot Polly. He barely involved himself in Matt's funeral, but calls only in times like this? Unbelievable. That happened? I'm sorry I didn't notice. No, it's not your fault. But I'm worried it might trouble you. Like today with the phone call. Don't worry about that. More importantly, Polly may not realize it, but you should be more careful around Catherine. That is... Deanna and Garrett exchanged a look, then nodded and began to speak. Actually, near my company there's this bar district. One day when I happened to go for a drink, I spotted Catherine there, and she was with a man I've never seen before. Honestly, I felt a pang of sympathy for my own son and couldn't say anything. Well, that's his own fault. But if something like this happens again to mom, we need to think about it. Deanna said this with a cheerful smile. For now, leave this to us. Right, Garrett? Yes, leave it to me, Carrie. Yes, thank you. But really, don't push yourselves. I agreed, feeling somewhat overwhelmed by their insistence. Anyway, I thought it best to have nothing more to do with it all. But reality doesn't always go as planned. Catherine came again seemingly displeased with our last phone conversation. Oh, Carrie, still working part-time, I see. Catherine, we talked about this on the phone, didn't we? It seems nothing got through to you. I'm disappointed. Catherine seemed displeased by my words. Are you sure you should be saying that, Carrie? Do you know that Polly's client is Garrett's company? Catherine suddenly laughed mockingly and blurted out. 
Hearing this for the first time, I was shocked and my eyes widened. Seeming pleased with my reaction, Catherine cheerfully laughed and whispered to me, Come to the cafe by the river called Lark later today, if you don't want Garrett's company to go under, okay? Catherine's smile looked devilish. I could only nod and said, Understood. And she left the shop contentedly, still smiling. After my part-time shift, I headed to the designated cafe. Catherine was already there and beckoned me over. You came as I expected, Carrie. Her sinister smile sent a chill down my spine. The cafe was quiet, seemingly unnoticed by others. Inside, the two of us sat in the tense silence. What do you want? <laughs> I was hurt by what happened before, so I want you to take responsibility. Catherine continued with a smile. Besides, Polly is an executive in his company, involved in big deals. His company and Garrett are about to have a major business deal. But what if that deal falls through because of you, Carrie? Wouldn't Garrett lose his job? You! If you care about your beloved Garrett and Deanna, promise to pay me $300,000 right now. $300,000? <laughs> it's a big amount, but you said a lot to me, right? It's only fair. If you don't agree... Catherine raised her hand. A menacing man emerged from the back of the cafe and stood in front of the table. This man, a friend of mine, works in a, let's say, shady world. So if you don't pay, I won't be responsible for what happens to Deanna or Sarah, okay? I was speechless at her shocking words. Realizing I had married my son to such a terrible woman, was overwhelming. I glared at her and managed to say, Understood. <laughs> I appreciate your understanding. And you know what will happen if you tell Deanna or Garrett about this, right? Yes. <laughs> then I look forward to your cooperation, Carrie. I left the cafe feeling like I was being chased out. Returning home, the house was still and quiet. More than anything, I was shocked at the ugliness of the person Polly had married. Sighing, I sat in front of my husband's picture. Dad, I'll do my best. I will protect what you left me in my own way. Declaring this, I steeled myself. I was determined not to let Catherine have her way. Remember this. I'll make you regret everything you've done. First, I set a day to transfer the money to Catherine. Having agreed to pay and knowing she expected it, I calmly set a time frame to prevent any harm to Deanna or Sarah. Explaining the difficulty of the amount for a part-timer like me, I promised to pay within a month, and surprisingly, Catherine agreed cheerfully. Understood. So within a month, then. Yes, I'll make sure to pay. That's because there was a reason. I set it for a month. Within a month, a relative's funeral was scheduled. I wanted to resolve things there, so I arranged it without causing any issues. Today is the day of the funeral, where many relatives will gather, including Polly and his wife. I decided to settle things there. Oh, Sarah has grown so much. It's been a while, everyone. Our family relatives are relatively close-knit. Just before the funeral started, Polly and his wife arrived. Wow. This atmosphere brings back memories. Ugh, this country vibe is too much. Can't wait to leave. Despite the occasion, their usual attitudes were unchanged. As one of the uncles was about to say something, Catherine approached me first. Hello, Carrie. Her face clearly showed anger, probably about the money not being transferred yet. Hello, Catherine. After exchanging greetings, the funeral started. So Catherine couldn't say more and took her seat. But her expression seemed to say, You'll remember this. After the funeral ended, the meal started. The topics were nostalgic memories of the deceased relative, current updates, and talks about my husband, Matt. He used to go drinking with Matt a lot. Really, time flies. But it's important to have something like that necklace to remember them by, isn't it? Indeed. I touched the necklace as I spoke. The small pearl necklace was a gift from Matt. Lost in these fond memories, Catherine suddenly raised her voice. But isn't it tactless to wear such a thing here? 
The relatives in the room started murmuring. Besides, that's a fake, right? No such tarnished pearls exist. Well, fake pearls suit a poor person like Carrie, right? How dare you! Wait, Deanna, calm down. But... Catherine's cheek were flushed, probably from drinking. Seemingly emboldened by alcohol, she blurted out these words. Honestly, it was different from what I expected, but she was self-destructing, so I silently vowed to make her pay dearly. Before I could respond, the relative spoke up. What is she talking about? Carrie poor? Don't make such jokes. How could you say such a thing? It's just your lack of judgment. The relatives, angered by Catherine's comments, spoke back, and she seemed surprised. I stood up and faced her. I don't know why you think this pearl is fake, but it's from Matt's jewelry store. It's definitely not fake. Tiffany, ever heard of it? What? Tiffany? As in the famous jewelers? You married him without knowing his father-in-law's company. Carrie used to be the assistant manager of that store. But she's working part-time. That's what I said before. Mom is working part-time just for fulfillment. We don't need her money, but she insists on paying us living expenses every month. Besides, she's retired now, but there's an inheritance in savings left by Matt. We're far from poor. Catherine looked dumbfounded. Polly hurried to her side, trying to defend her. Wait, don't blame her. Polly, look at reality. She's awful. Shut up, little sister. What do you know? Catherine glared at us. I came here to settle this thoroughly, so I began. You, you won't get away with this. Who won't? Your wife running a scam? And if it gets out she has a boyfriend, you'd be the one who couldn't bear it. What? How do you know that? About that? Let me explain. Here's the proof. Garrett showed documents revealing various truths. Photos included the cafe I visited, the man Catherine was with, and Catherine walking closely with the man who wasn't Polly. What's this about? Yes, Catherine had been involved in scamming people with bad friends from her student days. That was the full story behind her treatment of me, and Polly was partly to blame too. Polly, while our companies do business... I've never heard your name mentioned. But you've been telling Catherine you're an executive, but you hold no such position, right? What? You've been lying to me? Hearing Garrett's explanation, Catherine started screaming. Sighing, I retrieved an attached case from the reception, opening it in front of them. It contained $300,000 in cash. Here's the $300,000 you unfairly demanded from me, Catherine. Emphasizing unfairly, she glared at me, her face turning red. I had recorded everything from the day she took me to the cafe. I never intended to treat my son and wife this way, but I thought it was best for them to learn a hard lesson. However, the condition is that you never appear before us again. You've caused enough trouble, and when I die, you won't get a penny of my inheritance. Wait, Mom, I'll leave Catherine. What? Holly... When you decided to marry Catherine, Matt and I tried to stop you. Weren't you going to be happy with her? You're her husband. Don't change your attitude now. Support her until the end. What? Stunned, the relatives started shouting, That's right, get out of here! Initially, the two of them talked back, but they couldn't stand against the majority and left the shop meekly. Carrie, that must have been tough. Are you okay? Yes, I'm sorry, everyone, for causing such a commotion. Don't worry about it. Your uncle would be pleased, too. Mom. Deanna, Garrett, thank you so much. I've caused trouble for you, too. Not at all. We just did what we wanted to do. Finally, I feel like everything has cleared up and life is returning to normal. Afterward, it turned out Catherine was involved in various other fraudulent activities and ended up getting arrested by the police. Polly came crying to me soon after, but since Matt had warned him repeatedly, I decided to keep my distance. The commotion seemed to have spread rumors to Polly's company, and now he's been demoted, working at a subsidiary. As for me, I continue with my part-time work, living a peaceful life.
This pearl you gave me. It helped me through this ordeal. Perhaps there's really power in the things our loved ones leave behind. Despite getting wrapped up in various issues, this experience made me realize the support of people and warmth around me. From now on, I plan to live my remaining life never forgetting to be grateful for each day.